I knew all week long that this was going to be um, Pentecost, Pentecost Sunday. Again, uh, 50 days from Passover when that was the last time I shared. And um, <clears throat> kind of at the last minute, I decided maybe I should follow that up because it's a big part of really not just a good message, but sort of a, a, a bit of prophetic word of of where we're at in relationship to the the virus thing and all of that. So um, uh, thank you, Jim. <clears throat> Appreciate it. So let me let me just catch you up on what we kind of shared uh, before. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> I shared on Passover, and uh, we talked about Israel being in Egypt. We talked about them uh, that there was a plague, just like. The situation we've got here, there's a plague and <clears throat> and they had the shelter in place. They had to um, do what we're doing, basically stay in their homes. And um, but then we we understood that for the for the Egyptians, for the world, if you will, um, it was a plague. But for us it was an opportunity to eat the lamb and that that was what we should be doing between um, Passover <clears throat> and uh, Pentecost and uh, and then on but that there was going to be a journey there was going to be a journey and we talked about that and and so um, uh, <clears throat> that uh, time could be set aside for not just seeking the Lord, not just being a Christian, but for eating the lamb like Israel did. And, and that's exactly what kind of happened when Jesus did on Passover. He broke the bread and he said, this is me. This is my flesh. <clears throat> take, eat, you know, take me in. Don't just preach me or believe in me or, you know, pray to me far away. But, but putting that life and nature within us. And so... <clears throat> we have um, so we have the example of that with Jesus and and the Passover and everything, but then after the Passover, um, the disciples, of course, they were supposed to continue to eat the lamb. They were supposed to understand what the cross was really about, and they were supposed to go forward or not go forward, but at least shelter in place, if you will, and taking in that lamb but they didn't understand and so there was a lot of failure between passover and pentecost and i want to talk about that i want to talk about it in in relationship first of all <clears throat> the failure and then i want to talk about it in relationship to the the amazing heart of god at the end of this at pentecost and and the all the the journey that he's going to set up during this time. So, if you will, turn with me, and I'll, I'll be reading from quite a few scriptures, so <clears throat> if you can't turn fast enough, I'll read the scriptures and you can listen. This is uh, Matthew 26, and verse 53 through 58. <clears throat> now, this is when Jesus is in the garden, okay? So we know that there were failures there, uh, the lamb is fixing to be given and they're sleeping. <clears throat> but this is when they came to take Jesus. And of course, Peter grabs a sword and cuts, malches his ear off and the whole thing. Well, this is Jesus speaking right after that took place. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? that thus it must be. In that same hour, said Jesus to the multitudes, are you come out as against a thief uh, with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple and you laid no hand on me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. And, uh, and they laid, uh, and they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest where the scribes and elders were assembled. But Peter followed him afar off. <clears throat> so we have 
we have immediately after the, the, the preparation of the lamb is to be slain and to be eaten and, and all of this, that um, <clears throat> the disciples forsook him and they fled. And Peter did follow, but he followed afar off. And we know, we know that his, he, he denied the Lord three times. Okay, now still in Matthew, but just a, a couple of chapters over. Matthew 28. And I'm, I'm reading these scriptures to set up what the, the beauty of what's going to happen uh, at Pentecost. <clears throat> and now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priest all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, telling these soldiers, say this to the people that his disciples came by night and stole him away while you slept okay and um, <clears throat> so um, they're setting now a, a worse scenario for the disciples that they're they're sneaking around and lying and doing all kind of stuff and spread this word they're already afraid they already fled um, but now uh, spread this word against them. Okay, now Mark, two more along this line. Mark 16, verse 9 and 10. Now when Jesus was risen early in the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him <clears throat> as they mourned and wept. So she's going to the disciples and she goes to them as they mourn and weep. They have been mourning and weeping this whole time. Freaked out. Not just because Jesus was taken and killed, but because um, of the fear of all this rumors that's being spread and the fact that the, you know, all these things that are going on. So now this is uh, John 20, verse 18 and 19. And this is, this is a, a follow-up. Well, let me finish that. Sorry. Let me finish that verse that I was just reading. As they mourned and wept, and they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. They're weeping. They're mourning. All this stuff's going on. Now, John 20, verse 18 and 19. <clears throat> Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear. So this is the continuation. First she told them that uh, she, they, she'd seen Jesus and that Jesus told her to go to them. And they were in mourning and wept and felt like failures and were not in tune with what was going on and they were confused and they believed not. <clears throat> so um, uh, that same day after that experience, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she'd seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear. So they're still, no matter what they've heard, they're still shut in, okay, shut in, sheltered in place in the upper room. They're shut in for fear. And Jesus came and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. So they were supposed to be eating the lamb. They were supposed to be making the most of this shelter in place time. They were supposed to be um, filling up for the journey and prepared, but they weren't. They were, they weren't. They were quivering in fear. And uh, as we'll see in other scriptures, they, there was, and some that we read, they, there was doubting and other things that were going on. So, <clears throat> um, they're hiding, they're afraid, 
they're unsure of themselves um, instead of full of the Lamb. And uh, you could say in a certain sense that they were hiding from the, the death angel. Now, it wasn't like in Passover, that first Passover, where there was a death angel that was going to pass, o- pass over or not. <clears throat> this was everything from uh, the Romans to the chief priest rumors and all of that. And some had fled for their lives. You know, I read that. The scriptures said that uh, some of those disciples had fled for their lives. Some denied him. Some betrayed him. They all hid. That was in those scriptures that I read. They all hid. They're hiding. Yeah, they're sheltering in place, but they're all hiding up there. And all of this stuff swirling and going, well, what do we do? And how do we handle this? And all of that. And their failures had made them worthy of being uh, fearful of the future. Instead of filling it up on that lamb, they were like, you know, we, we failed. We missed the Lord. We, you know, we fell short. We didn't understand. So many things can go in our minds. So many things can attack our emotions and mess with us over these things. And so, <clears throat> so now let's go to Acts chapter 1. Okay. Remember, today is legally the day of Pentecost. January 1st and 2nd and all of that's coming up. And it's coming up on the external of the the plague outside. It's coming. So this is Acts chapter 1, starting with verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. This is the Lord with them. But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. So Jesus had been speaking to him. I mean, I just got goosebumps because I remember Jesus saying to them, I must go away. Well, when he said that, he was talking about the cross. He wasn't just talking about, I'm going to go fly away to my father. He was talking about, I'm, I'm going away. And the Holy Spirit is going to come. And he's going to explain me in a way that you haven't known me. Okay. Um, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And when they therefore were come together, so here they are, they're still up in that upper room thing, sheltering in place, sheltering in place until the day of first fruits, the first ripe fruits. Um, Come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So they're, they're just, they're looking in the externals and he's about to bring the internal, the eternal. <clears throat> um, and verse 7, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, <clears throat> but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be martyrs or witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, trust me, the Holy Spirit hadn't come. Jesus has said all this to them. There had been, so that there were, this wasn't the day before Pentecost that Jesus said this. So they're still up in that upper room. They're still shut in. They still don't know uh, and are fearful. I mean, I was trying to think about this. And I thought, you know, <clears throat> if they are uh, up there, even if they've seen Jesus, that kind of adds to the, the problem because um, it's like, uh, well, we've, we've seen Jesus, but 
nothing's changed. They're still out to get us. This is st we still look bad. Um, the Romans could break down the door at any time. Um, we haven't changed one bit. In fact, we're still praying and mourning and, you know, all of this. And, and Jesus came and told us this stuff and he's gone. And he said, well, wait. Wait on what? We don't understand all of this. So, <clears throat> Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, still sheltering in that same place where they shivered and feared and didn't understand and doubted and all the different scriptures that I read have those, those elements in the weeping and mourning and, and, you know, I am sure, folks, they didn't, they thought when that mentioned that uh, they were weeping and mourning, they didn't know at that time that Jesus was alive. As far as they knew, we have totally failed in, in from the time of eating the lamb till now, we are just the furthest thing from that. <clears throat> and suddenly, sometimes you just need a suddenly. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven where it was emphasized the mighty the rushing mighty wind this one's coming not from the earth it's coming from above from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting okay all what house excuse me all the shelter and place house all of the um, the house like in Egypt when they were there and the, the death angel was going to pass by. <laughs> the death angel. Well, this ain't the death angel. It may be from heaven or hell. I don't know. But it is. this isn't going to be the death angel. This is going to be the answer and filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire, as a fire. This is, this is undeniable uh, fire. This isn't, well, I just want to be on fire for God or I'm on fire for God. No, 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 no. This is the Holy Spirit. And he's like fire. How did Jeremiah put it? Shut up in my bones. Man, he's got me on the inside, on the structure of what I am. Shut up in those bones. And it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. <clears throat> so, here it is, the day of Pentecost. It's been 50 days since they sat with Jesus in that same upper room. 50 days of not going out and of fearful of what's out there. And it's probably a plague of of sorts, spiritual, uh, to go out and, you know, weeping and mourning and, and, and hearing good news, but doubting and belie not believing and, and uh, you know, doubting themselves, doubting what, what they're going to be now without Jesus. 50, 50 days had passed. And, you know, this was like that, I don't know if I mentioned it, but the, the, the uh, 
uh, Spanish flu pandemic on Passover had reached the highest point. It had gone on for a long time in different places, all over, but, but in the United States, it had, it had reached a peak on Passover. But on, on Pentecost Sunday, 50 days later, the pandemic broke. That's historically a fact. It had been going before that, but it reached that peak. And nobody would have believed on that Passover day that this thing could just start dissipating and going away starting on Pentecost. Acts 2, verse 12 and 13, and they were all amazed and were in doubt. <laughs> I'm amazed. I'm in doubt. Uh, and, and saying one to another, what meaneth this? What does this mean? What does it mean? That's us. That is so us. God can do all kind of stuff. And we're going, what does it mean? Well, good thing it's not a mental thing he's trying to get in us. He's not trying to explain all outward evidences. He's trying to get his spirit, his own spirit in us to be able to declare Christ in a way we've never known him before. And that would start, start on Pentecost Sunday, which is today. That would start and the journey would start. That's when the journey started. They've been sheltering for 50 days, but the journey starts on Pentecost Sunday. And the Holy Spirit starts moving within them. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? And others mocking. So you got, uh, you got your own people up there in the upper room who this is happening to, but still they're, they're, they don't know what's really going on for sure. And you got people externally outside who heard it and you know, knew something big was going on, and they're mocking mocking and said, these men are full of new wine. Well, uh, you got two groups. You got the upper room or the sheltering in place and you got the people outside who are in, in a sense are the plague that are against you. Some of them been looking for where you were and there, nobody is expecting this kind of treatment that God's going to just come down and fill the failures. God fills the failures. That's a great title for this. God fills the failures. Hey, that's good news. Hmm. Let's go on. Um, oh, and I, I mentioned others are expecting failure from the disciples, the failing disciples. Of course you're failing. You're drunk. You've been messed up. You've been mourning. You've been da-da-da-da. You know, uh, you, you know, your Lord, the one you followed, is no longer here. You have no direction. You must be drunk. That's got to be what's going on here. You guys been drinking because you're, you know, you don't have any real direction. You've so totally messed up, you just decided, well, let's just drink ourselves silly. Acts chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. But Peter, but Peter, standing up, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice. Man, this, this took the Holy Spirit because he betrayed Jesus. Or, or denied him, denied him three times, stood up, lifted up his voice, and said, Ye men of Judah, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, which if we were going to be drunk, we'd, we'd wait till later. <clears throat> 
but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, the last days of our life as failures. Now, that doesn't mean we won't fail, but we won't be those kind of failures. That's the last days of this. Saith God, I will pour out my spirit, my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. All right. So Peter stands up and he says, you expect drunk, drunkenness and depression from us. And you probably have every right to think that because we didn't do so good during this filling up on the lamb thing. But that's not what this is. You expect that from us. We expect it from us. But that's not what this is. This is the fulfillment of the word of God that was spoken by our prophets long time ago. That he's pouring out his spirit on, on uh, the lacking, the ones who lack us. He's pouring out the spirit on the people who least deserve it and yet and Peter's up there really, he's, he's got it now. He's starting to, you know, he's starting the journey from out of Peter of disciples to Peter with the lamb formed, formed in him. So instead of, you know, because they, they were expecting rejection and loss and all this stuff, but instead of rejection, He's talking about your sons and your daughters and your young men and your old men and all flesh. We're going to see and speak forth his word by the spirit now. So look at verse 23 and 24 of the same book, Acts chapter 2. This is Peter speaking. Him being delivered by the determinant counsel and foreknowledge of God you have. So now the failures up in the upper room, because remember the 11 stood up with him. They'd already replaced Judas with Matthias. They stood up with him and he's talking to all of those who wanted to kill them or find them or, or condemn them or be against them and, and to attack them. He speaks to them and says, him, he'd been talking about Jesus, him being delivered by the determinate counsel of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that it, he should be holding on it. So Peter, Peter's pointing out their failures too. You know, you're, you're, you guys are drunk. Well, <laughs> you crucified Christ, you know. And... Uh, so uh, he and he, he points out wicked hands and crucified and slain. You did this to Jesus, but there's a resurrection. See, he didn't turn on them. He showed their, their failure just as much as their own personal failure. But he said there's a resurrection and a life. Still in Acts 2, verse 25 and 26. For David speaketh concerning him. Oh, glory to God. David speaks concerning Christ crucified. David. But for David spoke to us concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face and he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. After all of our failures and fears, I mean, these are the words coming, coming out of Peter's mouth to them. This is for all, all of us. After being locked up in a dark place for 50 days, and in, it's one thing to be locked up in a place for 50 days. It's another thing to be locked up that long with fear and darkness and doubt and worry it's worse to be locked up in a dark place in your own mind or your own spirit in that dark place of your own thoughts feelings 
But Peter's now saying, you, you did this. Just like we failed him, and we have his spirit. You failed him by crucifying him. But now, we can, you, us, we can have the Lord always before our face. We can be with him, and with his spirit. We can, uh, he said, and not be moved, and our heart can rejoice, and our tongue can be glad, and our flesh can rest in hope. What, what kind of deal is this? That we fail so miserably and yet he comes back stronger and more precious. Verse 28 says, Thou hast made known, and this is it, this is why all this good comes to those who deserve the worst. Why would all this good come to those who deserve the worst? The very next verse explains it. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy at thy countenance. The ways of life, not the ways of religion, not the ways of new creation fellowship, not the ways of the teachings that any one of us have the ways of life and you made known to me that but that wasn't all and you have uh, you had thou shalt make me full you have made me full of joy at thy countenance because we're getting to see your face this came to the ones who felt like they had no hope they had failed Jesus so miserably from Passover to that day. So just a uh, closing scripture. This is in Isaiah 61, verse 1 through 3. Remember, this was the day of Pentecost, the day of Pentecost, the day of the new journey the day of the Holy Spirit being released to, to begin to speak these things. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. And this is Peter speaking, you know, speaking. I mean, where does the strength come from? We know the broken heart of Peter weeping bitterly. He probably was the main one within that upper room that was continually breaking down and crying for his failure of Jesus, of the not eating the lamb, of not being with the lamb when when he should have been. And they, he would break down and cry. And then, of course, that would spur others and they would start weeping and then the whole place was just weeping and mourning the spirit of the lord is upon me because the lord hath anointed me to preach good things to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted that's that's us and then that's us that's the brokenhearted and then that's us as he hath anointed me to preach this good news. It's different when you, it's one thing to preach it because it's what, it's a message. It's another thing to have been so totally a failure to him and to his heart. And he brings his spirit upon you to begin to move in this thing in this way. And a new journey is set. And it's not going to be like it was before. And it's not meant to be like it was before. And you're not supposed to dwell on what was before. You're supposed to, to, to receive. See? He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to the captives in that upper room, to the captives of those who crucified Jesus and they crucified the ant, their very answer. And the opening of the prison 
to them that are bound. I don't know what that upper room looked like. I don't know. That's where they that's where they celebrated Passover together. That's, you know, where Jesus sat with them. That's where Jesus said, this is my body. Eat this. Take, take this. This is my blood. Drink ye all of it. They're there. I don't know what's there. But when here it is now, Acts chapter 2, the Spirit has come and Peter stands up and then it says in 11 with him, I'm, I'm picturing a balcony. <laughs> I'm picturing a balcony and there and Peter's up there letting fly with life and freedom and nobody can preach freedom for the captives like a captive that's been set free, made free. The truth will make you free. Nobody can do it like that. Uh uh. Nobody can preach it like that. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound, bound up. And someone walks over and unlocks that. Just come on out. We're going to take those bonds off of you by the Spirit of God. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Hmm. I wonder if we could apply that from Pentecost through 2020, that, that the dreaded year 2020 could end up being that acceptable year of the Lord. Acceptable is a word that they use for an offering that rises to the Father of the Lamb. This is such an acceptable year of the Lord. And we could say the first part, we were not acceptable. We proved that we're failures. We proved we're not we're, we'll never make it. We'll never be enough. We'll never get it. We'll never learn it. We'll never have it. But, this is Peter coming out now. But, this is the Spirit of the Lord is on me, and I'm going to stand up, and I'm going to preach, and I'm going to bring Joel out of the book, and I'm going to say, This is that. Every generation before us, this wasn't that because they never experienced it like this. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. The acceptable year of the Lord spoken of by Isaiah. And the day of vengeance of our God, well, He takes vengeance. He took it on us. He brought us into the death with the Lamb and then He gave us the life of the Lamb. To comfort all that mourn. Oh my God, oh my God, these guys up there, this and the and Mary, the mother of Jesus, being up there also, and so many more. And they mourned, and yet to comfort now that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to comfort them that mourn. This is a new journey. The journey is just beginning. It's the early going. It's the very early. We're like, we're like the lamb has been slain. We didn't understand it. We ate it. We did all of this stuff. And then the Lord said, go. And, and so we went out and we fumbled around all through the wilderness and we failed God and we did all of this. And, you know, and my Lord, how can he love? How could he care for us at all? He cares for his son and the spirit has come. Jesus wouldn't declare himself like he needed to be declared. So Jesus goes away and shows himself as a lamb and the Holy Spirit rushes into the vacuum to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. The year of eating the lamb and letting it rise to the Father. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Those who mourn in Zion. We shouldn't be mourning in Zion. But we didn't understand. We didn't understand. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them here. Give me the ashes of your failures. Give me the ashes of your failures. Give them to me. And then he says, 
the joy, the oil of joy. Give me your mourning. Give me your broken heartedness over your failures. Give me your weariness with failing. The garment of praise for the spirit of depression. Give me your depression. I'll give you this garment of praise. Give me your ashes and I will appoint this to you. Beauty! Mourning, the oil of joy. Let me pour this over you. Let me pour this anointing of oil of the Holy Spirit. Let it just wash away your mourning, your 50 days of mourning. I mean, can you imagine if the Lord said, well, wait for the Holy Spirit. He's going to come in 50 days. And every day they just mourned and wept and cried and went, oh my God, you know, oh my God, we're not getting it. We're, I don't know what's supposed to be happening. Here, I'll pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. The Spirit of the Lord will be upon you to do this, to show Him who is this. That they might be called trees of righteousness. Okay. Trees of righteousness. Let's hold that. He's calling us trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. We didn't do it. The Lord planted the seed in us. And He's calling us trees of righteousness because we're the planting of the Lord, not that we knew how to do this thing. The planting of the Lord that He might be glorified. That He, that's the end of those verses, that He might be glorified. How many of you want Jesus glorified? How many of you want His heart in this manner? How many of you are willing to give up your ashes and your depression and, and, and take, just receive of the Holy Spirit? Uh, I'm not you know, necessarily talking about being baptized in the Holy Spirit as much as the Spirit, my Spirit will dwell in you. And the journey will begin and we will do this in line with, with the, the Sabbath of Pentecost. And we will do this in line with, with what he hoped for um, in, uh, uh, in the Passover. But the disciples failed and Israel failed and everything failed to reach Pentecost in a way that would glorify God. But God didn't hold back. He didn't hold back for them and He won't hold back for you or me or us. He won't. He won't. So I'm going to just ask you right now in the name of Jesus, you know, I, wanna, I, I will pray for you. How many of you want, you, just, just admit if, if you're one of those, just admit you don't really understand this. They didn't have a clue what was about to hit them. But God spoke to us 50 days ago and told us of an incredible uh, journey that he had in his heart. And this is how it begins. The, and, and this is, guess what? This is the day that it begins. This is the day. Pentecost. Pentecost Sunday. How many of you are willing to say, Spirit of God, in the way... Uh, that you want to begin to move in me, then I want that. I want a change of my approach. My, I, want, I need to get out of my failures and get into your spirit. But I can't do that on my own. Amen. Amen. Well, as I pray, I just ask you in your heart or, or, or out loud wherever you're at to be praying for one another. And, and let this spirit be released in a manner that can truly, truly penetrate all of that 
depression, all of that mourning, all of those ashes, all of that, those things that stand in the way. Father, I just come to you in the name of Jesus. And there, Father, we, we have failed again. But, Father, we're in a different place. You spoke to us of a journey coming out of our Egypt, coming out of our shelter and place, as it were, to be able to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Father, we're talking spiritually, but we ask you, and Lord, it's no coincidence that at the very same time, right, right, right now, right about this time, people are opening up all over the United States. And Texas, Father, is just opening up. Well, Father, we don't just want that kind of an opening. We want this kind of an opening up. We want to go this journey with you. And we want to be feasting on the Lamb, the whole journey by the power of the Spirit of God. So, Father, first of all, we just say we're sorry for the failures. We're sorry for the depression. We're sorry for the mourning. We're sorry for the indifference. All the things that, that we've missed. We've missed you on. And we want to move past that, Father. We want, to, we want to grab hold of the hope that you're talking about. And so we ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that this spirit that you, that, that you put upon me to share this, this spirit that you put upon us on Passover when we talked about these things, that that spirit that you manifested in the Bible, in the New Testament on the day of Pentecost, that the Spirit of God would bring a new journey of a walk in Him. Father, that the Word of God from the Old Testament and the New Testament would be proclaimed as Christ. And it would be the boldness that Peter had when he should not have had any boldness. Father, it wasn't pride. You got hold of him. A man who was so broken, you got hold of him by your spirit. And from that day, you began your journey with Peter to teach him the lamb in ways that many others would never know. But he would continue to teach them. Father, let it be so in us. Father, let the prayers of your saints right now that are sheltered in place in other, in other countries and in other countries cities and other states. Let the prayers be rising up as incense to you for one another, not just for ourselves, not just praying for ourselves, just as what you did on the day of Pentecost wasn't even just for the, those who were sheltered in place in the upper room. It broke out to those who were around. Father, beyond us. Us, yes, but beyond us. Reach, reach your hand of the Spirit right now. and Move on them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, We don't have words, but we do have hearts. And they are beating hard right now within us because we hear. And more than hear right now, we receive. We are receiving the Holy Spirit. We are receiving the Holy Spirit with one heart and one mind and one core. Let the Lamb of God be in us in a way He's never been in us, a way we've never experienced before. A way that makes everything new. Holy Spirit, we do that now. Just like those people did in that upper room on that day. They, of one heart, one mind, they opened up and you came and you filled them. You breathed into them. The lamb in ways that weren't teachings and weren't 
ministry and leadership and words. It was nature and life and hope and the future of, of God having his son. And Lord, we do it now. We do it now with all our heart, with all our faith, with all our agreement. We say yes to the Holy Spirit. We say yes to the Lamb and His selfless giving and new beginnings and mercies upon mercies for the heart of the Father. We partake. We say amen with every fiber of our being. And Lord, we say yes, the past is gone. It's gone. In the movements of heaven and now in the movements of our earth where the dove and then Lamb has got brand new ground. We're the house that's being flooded with new life and it's lamb life and we're as one body, we're as one mind. We're not comparing ourselves, we're beholding the lamb in a new way and experiencing. And so, Father, we count days now from right now. A new beginning. Lord, we pray that the blood of Jesus would cleanse and remove even the remembrance of the past so we can be focused and filled. Failures that are filled with the Lamb in living ways. Do all that's in your heart, Father. Continue now. The Spirit of God is moving, bringing forth the Lamb. Let it be for your glory through Jesus Christ in your church. It's in His holy, precious name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.